What up, bro? What's up? Ask me about his butt. <laughs> uh, we've been hearing all kind of off-season about a more aggressive front. What does that mean for the uh, yep. Um, as you know, 11 guys on the field in the game of football, we all, it's a team sport. So if one part of the unit is playing a certain way, the rest of the guys have to play um, accordingly. So with the changes made to the front, as you kind of alluded to with the attack style, more aggressive, everybody has to fall in line, but especially the group that I coach, the linebackers, because we work hand in hand in the run game. The front does something and we essentially going to pretty much just read and react off those guys, but it has to be at a tempo that's aligned with the way the D-line is now playing. Yeah. As Lonely mentioned, uh, last year was kind of a, a little bit more of a weight and had our feet situation. He said, what do you see different? Oh, that, that right there makes me cringe. If it's Lonely, there's no padding your feet at all in this system that we're playing anymore. There's no waiting on anything. Uh, you better be off the spot reading and reacting. Uh, your key and diagnosis skills have to be pretty high to play in this type of system. With the emphasis on obviously getting in, in the backfield for the linebackers, does that put even more of an emphasis on run fit, gap and gap oriented? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that kind of speaks to what I just hit on. They play a certain way. And kind of I talked to some of our guys that's still around here for this week of practice. Just once you go, you have to know and go. It can't be a hesitation type deal. And that's why time on task, repetition, and really building confidence within the reps that they're going to take and have already took and carry over into training camp. Uh, just talking to them about not starting over. We can't start over in this system. That we've done a lot of good things this offseason, but they mean nothing if you show up to training camp and you act like this is the first time you're hearing it. So you have to know and you have to go once you know. When we were in Mobile, we talked about Derek Barnes, and you were very excited about his progress. Uh, can you update on that? How are you feeling about him right now? Absolutely. I'm even more excited about that player right now. With uh, having my hands on him for about two months now, uh, this offseason, he's done everything in more than I've asked. He's completely bought in. Uh, a lot of people around the building say they see a new guy. Uh, and, and, you know, I see the guy that I always thought was there. Uh, and it starts with the coach believing in the player to be able to pull out the most in the player. Uh, and if you go into that with uh, high optimism and high praise and thoughts on the player, the player feels that. And in turn, without knowing it, you're kind of, it's kind of a mind game at the same time when, with the coach-player dynamic. And that guy, man, the sky's the limit for him. But he knows as well. Uh, he hasn't had a lot of off-ball experience. So that's just, for me, getting the mold of clay. And now I can make it into wherever I want it. But in the same time, he has to go do it. I told him I can't talk to you through the headset or I'll play to tell you what to do. But when Derek knows what to do, you'll see it this fall. That that player there is not many in the league with his stature, with his power, with the way he can run and hit, can do what he can do once he knows exactly what to do. You called Malcolm Rodriguez one of the smartest young players you've been around. How has yep. that manifested itself on the field so far during offseason stuff? Malcolm's an absolute joy to coach. As a linebacker coach especially, he's a guy – there. He's the type of player where I say I can close my eyes and just put him out there. And then I know now there's an execution piece to that. But as far as from above the neck, the mental standpoint of the linebacker position, he is a joy to coach. He attacks every day. He has this serious kind of humorous personality to him to where it's like a no nonsense. But at the same time, you know, you could joke around with him. You can't. He's, he's a man's man. And I think the trajectory on his career, the arrows up on him. That has to be pretty rare for a rookie. So, already kind of having that in his pocket, what is there, is there things you can do with him that maybe you'd have to scale back on a, on a typical rookie? Absolutely. There's things I could do with Malcolm that you might have to scale back on a third year player, to be honest. A player that can come in, like I said, and I saw this immediately at rookie training camp, uh, being able to take command of the huddle. Although he's at the wheel linebacker spot, the green dot doesn't mean the middle linebacker anymore. That means the three down linebacker that's on the field. That's the new age of the NFL and that's where we are. So I, so I tell him, if you show me you have the communication skills and the mental capacity to handle it, you're going to wear the green dot. And he is definitely a green dot type linebacker, a guy that, that has the capabilities to take control of the defense. How's it been having a Jared Davis back in the locker room? Oh, it's outstanding. We had to work through the weird dynamic of I'm the one standing up in front of him with the cowboy and not sit next to him anymore. So, you know, after the first two days of him like, man, Chef, this kind of crazy. And I'm like, it's no different. I'm just standing in front. When I sat next to you, I was telling you what to do all the time. <laughs> it was just, but no, it's outstanding to be able to bring, because we all know this is a younger team here, and to be able to bring in a guy, just not a guy, 
but a former first round pick, a guy that was on a pretty nice salary last year to see him humble himself and bring himself down to a point to where he's not walking in the first round quote unquote starting linebacker. He's walking in as a free agent guy who took a one year flyer type contract and has to earn everything he's getting. So for the younger guys in the room, and I lay it all out there for them, they all know I play with JD and how I feel about him, but he's not excused of the standard of the room. And when they see the way I treat him, when they see the way I coach him, when they see the way he conducts himself, they have no choice. It's kind of the same dynamic I had in my room last year with Romeo. Like me being close to Romeo, a teammate of his for three years, a true friend to him outside of like coach player relationship. If I'm able to really curse him out every day and coach him hard, the other guys are like, oh man, if he does it to him, I mean, I have no choice but to fall in line. And just the way he approaches every day, I couldn't ask for a better pro in the room. Have you seen a, a change in his demeanor at all? He kind of touched on it you know, when he was <clears throat> in his press conference when he came back, but he was, he was life or death was football you know, back then. Things have changed a little bit now. He, he sees football from a different perspective. Have you had those conversations with him at all? Absolutely, because I was there during the midst of it, and it did get dark for that player terms of football and life and that's the thing you have to you know the reality is the old school mentality and coaches is not cool to say in front of a microphone but it's it's football or nothing well that's not true like in the second you attack a player with the it's football or nothing for you you've lost the player because it's so much more to life and then to me and this is my own deal but if you could capture a player outside of the white lines they'll do anything for you inside the white lines because it's easy here it's really off the field the mental stuff that guys deal with their their personal lives so you need to know and understand their family dynamics and things like that they'll give you everything they got out here if they know you care more off the field than you do on the field where do you see his kind of fit in this defense because obviously first time around he was mostly an off-ball guy yep you guys have got him repping a, at least some at, at that kind of hybrid edge role yep so, um is, is he kind of a, a, a unique player in that Absolutely. Absolutely. And he's unique from the standpoint of having true off the ball experience his whole career. Now kind of, and they did some of it with the old regime here. We put him on edge, but he was primarily off the ball. Now he showed and he's exemplified the fact that he can legitimately be an edge player. Now, there's some things that he has to continue to work on leading into camp, but it's something that stood out to me initially, and I called him in, and I told him, if you could add this to your skill set, it not only builds your opportunities to make this roster, because that's where my room's at. Is It's not a guy, and I know I've seen things. That, there's not a guy. So the guys in my room are, one, trying to make this team when they show up to training camp, and then, number two, carve out a role. And the best way to do that is to be a versatile player. Something tells me he took that challenge. Head, head oh, JD, you could give JD any challenge. You, you could tell him you're playing the nose tackle spot today and his crazy butt would be in there trying to do it, man. He's he's literally a man's man. So with that competition, sort of that, as opposed to with different spots of this defense where there's a little more of a hierarchy, the linebackers. Absolutely. Pretty much of a fight. Is anyone trying to emerge as that, as that leader? Absolutely. You, you have, and that's the hard kind of seat that we're in right now is that there's about five of them that's emerging, but you can't play five. And I know everybody knows that Alex and I have a great relationship and we're continuing to build a great relationship between myself and Alex. And and because I was with him from afar last year, now being close up on him. And I'm not going to hide this. He has the most time on task in my room, but that doesn't designate him the starter. The things that we did last year are not acceptable for the standard that's been set this year. So don't tell me about what a guy did last year. I don't want to hear it, especially from my room's concern. Now, he does have the most time on task, so he'll get the nod at first, but that doesn't mean it's his spot. If the next guy is doing it and doing it better and at a higher level, he understands just like the other eight, nine guys in the room, that guy will be the guy on the field week one. We had some issues tackling last year. How did you Absolutely. approach that with your, with your charges here? Absolutely. The first thing, I mean, obviously now with no contact, and even when you get in training camp, the contact is so much limited from even when myself was playing, say 10 years ago, 12 years ago, coming into the league, you're hitting. Now, now those reps are so shrieking, so you have to, to me with tackling starts mentally, it's a mindset. It, it's, it's, it's a want to, it's a willingness. And, and then after you get to that point, it's the ability to be able to go and do it physically but before you get to that point what I've worked on is just reconditioning in the mind the mindset nasty attack style the way we play defense 
change is, is no different than our tackling mentality. And then once we get to camp, just implement different drills that me, that I assessed and deem is best for fixing that problem. Couple more guys. How are you with your uh, alma mater and Brian Kelly? You like that fit? Oh, I haven't been back since Brian took took over, but you know I'm close to a lot of the players there. I was there in 2020, so a lot of the players still reach out for advice and things like that. But you know it's LSU. You know the standards, the standard there, and I'm sure Brian coming from Notre Dame. I have a couple of his players on the team. I'm sure he'll do a great job down there. The way you talked about Last JD one. was uh, it's kind of the way we all see James Houston coming in as a guy who can play outside, play the edge, play off ball. Uh, how's he fitting in for you so far? James is fitted. James has done a great job, let me start by saying, because we've swung him a little bit. Some days, like you alluded to, you'll see him as stack backer. Other days, you'll see him playing on the edge. So with James right now, we're kind of in this dynamic and letting the player speak to us as well but kind of carving out a distinct role because being that young, a guy like JD's been in the league six years, I think, he understands. And all right, right now I'm at the mic, right now I'm at the Sam, right now I'm at DM, right? A player like James, his kind of wires are start getting crossed. So that's when it's on us as coaches. It's simplifying his roles, kind of giving him an ideal role going into training camp. And we've kind of done that and this week we'll finalize it with these last couple of days. Yes, coach. Yes, no problem. Yes, no problem.